So if you look in your service bulletin, it will tell you that the Reverend Sarah Fisher is preaching. I'm not the Reverend Sarah Fisher. <laughs> the Reverend Sarah Fisher texted me yesterday and she is having dreadful uh, experience with a cold and apologized that she would not be able to be with us here this morning. I texted her back and said I had done nothing in terms of sermon preparation for today. So she texted me what she had written and I'm gonna read you her message. She titles her message, Mark's Clothesline. As usual, Jesus draws a crowd. He's gotten a reputation as a preacher and a healer. He draws a crowd because he has something to offer the poor, the outcast. He draws a crowd because he's disrupting the status quo by welcoming, teaching, and healing people that no one else wants around. This disruption, disruptive inclusion, we might call it, is an expression of the liberation that is the trademark of the Gospel of Mark. Liberation is like a clothesline strung from one end of Mark's gospel to the other. On this clothesline hang parables, conversations, sermons, healings, and commissionings, all of which illustrate the story of God's work of liberation. One feature of this clothesline is that the power and pull of the status quo is so strong that it looks to some like madness. Jesus is accused of being out of his mind and being possessed. This is what they said about Copernicus when he suggested that the earth was not at the center of the universe. Lesser known than Copernicus, Alfred Wegener, who first spoke about plate tectonics, was ridiculed and rejected long after his death. History is full of people whose truth telling brings with it punishment and rejection. The scribes use strong language, saying that Jesus has Beelzebub. This is tantamount to Barack Obama be, being called a Muslim terrorist. Jesus responds with a series of short parables that turn the scribes' accusations back on themselves. I'm crazy? <laughs> I'm guilty of blasphemy? How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against himself, that kingdom cannot stand. Jesus' response to this accusation calls all of us to account. We are in a moment where divisiveness and polarization is the coin of the realm. We live in a kingdom divided against itself. As people of the Trinity, we follow a God that can hold disagreement and tension. But there are many in our society, in the US and right here in River City, who would have us choose sides. For example, politicians pressure us to believe that public safety cannot coexist with caring for the vulnerable, as if bike and pedestrian safety is somehow opposed to freedom and access for all. We are divided by our own binary thinking and virtue signaling. Jesus never excludes anyone from conversation about hope or liberation or healing based on their politics. In this model, the radical liberative nature of God, letting go of binary thinking that divides us is another feature of Mark's clothesline. When Jesus talks about binding the strong man, he is talking about dismantling structures that allow poverty and disease to go unchecked. To bind the strong man is to liberate the weak and make them strong. And the strong man, once bound, is liberated in their own way from power because loss can be in its own way liberating. All of Jesus' work is the invitation to liberation. When we reject this invitation, we reject God. And this is what Jesus calls the sin of blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Jesuit theologian 
Jean-Louis Segundo has written that, quote, the real sin against the Holy Spirit is refusing to recognize with theological joy some concrete liberation that is taking place before one's very eyes. Close quote. <clears throat> when was the last time you felt theological joy? We often don't see those words together. But I think whenever we can identify God showing up in liberative ways, that is theological joy, hanging on Mark's clothesline alongside being accused of being crazy <laughs> and letting go of divisiveness. The closure of St. Peter and Paul was anything but joyful. And yet, yesterday I heard myself telling a group of diocesan leaders how much hope and joy I felt about the new street church ministry that meets in Montevallia Park. Worshiping God and creating community without a building is a disruption of the status quo and even more important, is truly liberating. Because loss can be liberating and even once it is transformed, joyful. Another piece of this liberation is the clothesline of Mark's gospel, is finding our core identity in Jesus. Look at Jesus' biological family in this morning's gospel. Like the scribes, they are on the outside looking in. First, they're on the outside because they think Jesus needs restraining. Then, after Jesus' interaction with the scribes, they are literally outside calling to him. The crowd that gets between Jesus and his mother and his siblings find their identity in following Jesus above all else. When Jesus reciprocates by saying, here are my mother and my siblings, Jesus redefines the alliances that identify us. I hope we can hear this as good news. I hope we identify ourselves as part of Jesus's chosen family first, and then as parents, teachers, artists, students, baristas, Portlanders, or Americans. Aligning our identity with Jesus' liberating work unbinds us from the social and economic structures of our time. Sure, we need to buy food and pay rent, and most of us, for better or worse, belong to families. But if our hearts are set on the liberating kingdom of God, then our day-to-day -day work can become God's work. Can a piece of broken bread and a sip of wine liberate us? Can what we do in this place strengthen us and propel us to do our own casting out of demons and unbinding the oppressed? Let this be our clothesline. Amen.